Hi guys, it's Karen. Today I'm doing a photography related Q&A. I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram, so that's where the questions are coming from. And I just wanted to say that if you know me in real life or if you've already seen what I look like, you probably notice something different. Today I got over 20 inches of my hair cut off, so that's that. My hair is very short now, very short, and I'm very happy with it. So yeah, shout out to Antonio Salon in downtown Seattle. Check them out, they're rad. Anyways, yeah, let's just get right into the questions. The first question we answer is from Daisy Ball. She asks, what do you think is more important, the camera or the lens? I 100% think that the lens is more important. Cause like, for example, you could have a really fancy camera body and then the kit lens that comes with it. Or you could have a not as good camera body with a really nice lens and the photos would be so much better than a kit lens. So yeah, that's my little blurb on it. Like, definitely lens over the camera body. Next question I'm gonna answer is from Jamal the photographer. He asks, how do you get all your photos to look consistent as far as colors and tones? Um, so basically, I just like editing my photos like individually. I don't like editing to a specific theme or mood or tone like I just edit to that photo um, or to how I want it to look for my feed like consistency I I just post like one photo that goes with the theme or feed that I currently have and it can be from months ago and I'll just post that that's how the consistency thing works for me I just edit photos however I want and then I just post them when it looks good the next question I'm answering is from Aparna she asked what's the best iPhone editing apps well, I like using Polar, Fiesco, Afterlight, and Aviari. You can do a lot of things in Polar that you could do in Lightroom. Like, um, you can change the HSL, you can mess with the tone curves, you can do exposure, brightness, contrast, all that good stuff, the tint, temperature, all that is on Polar. You can do all of that. For like more general edits, Fiesco and Afterlight are good. They have a lot of like presets slash filters on them. I personally don't use filters or presets. Um, and then I like using Aviari for blemishes. It does a good job of getting rid of blemishes but not making you look like you have a plastic face. So yeah. <laughs> Next question I'm going to answer is from Ali. <laughs> she asks, what editing software do you mostly use? And I mostly use Lightroom. Um, yeah. Lightroom, or if I happen to not be near my computer, really want to edit, I'll just use my phone to edit and I'll use Polar, Fiesco, Afterlight, like the stuff I just said. Next question is from 714SRA. He asks, how long have you been doing photography? I have been doing photography for not that long. I got my camera December 2015. Yeah, so basically I started getting more serious in September last year and then I've been doing photography for like a couple months to like a year ish. Okay, and then next question is from by nine Abriel. She asks, "Do you plan to take up photography as your major in college?" I have no idea. I am a junior in high school right now. I probably wouldn't. Just thinking about it, like realistically, I don't think it would matter. Okay, so Bailey Makai Cup Photos asked like four questions, and I'm just gonna answer most all of them I guess. yeah okay so first question is how do you get clientele it's really just like word of mouth and posting pictures on Instagram I don't know like I'm friends with a lot of people from like different schools so then like we follow each other on Instagram and then they tell their friends or like their friends tell their friends so yeah it helps if you're in high school because um, like you know high schoolers these days with the Instagrams and the snapchats you know so yeah Next question is, how do you determine prices? This was super hard for me, and it's still super hard for me. I basically, I recommend just looking at other photographers in your area, or like if there are other hobbyist photographers, kind of like me, because I'm not like a professional or anything. Um, just look up their prices online, and then like price accordingly. If you think you could deliver the same quality as photos as someone who charges $400, go for it but if you don't think you can do that then just charge what you think your work is worth and I have a very large trouble 
with doing that. I don't charge very much compared to the people around me. Prices will fluctuate, so do your research, figure out what works best for you, and go on from there. And then she asks, what do you feel is more important to invest into first? Lens, camera body, editing software. Um, well, you kind of need a camera body and a lens to like take photos. But I think like if you already have that stuff, like the kit lens and all that stuff, I recommend investing into really nice lenses first for the reasons I said before. I mean, you kind of need a way to edit, but like what first? I mean... I think first you should get a really good lens and then get editing software and then worry about your camera body like years after you got your first one because like it shouldn't matter as much as the other stuff. So yeah. And then the last question she asked is what advice would you give to someone starting out? If you're starting out, my biggest advice is just to shoot, shoot and keep on shooting and then you'll get better. I promise. And then now I'm going to answer one of the DMs I got. Let me find it. This guy asks, what is your opinion on how much editing is too much? I feel like if the person looks unrecognizable, then that's too much. <laughs> I mean, like, express yourself. Edit as much as you want. There's lots of different ways to edit, and what may seem like too much to someone else may seem like too little to someone else, and vice versa. If you max all the bars on Lightroom, then that's probably a little too much. But I think it's really just up to you get inspired by other photographers, figure out if they edit a shit ton or if they edit like barely, and judge it yourself, you know? He also asked, what is the best way to adjust slash fix skin tones that my shitty camera messed up? For skin tones, like, that's the white balance. You fix skin tones with white balance. If the skin looks too blue, make it warmer. If the skin looks too yellow, make it colder. If the skin looks too pink, make it greener. And then if the skin looks too green, make it pinker. I don't really know how else to describe it. And then if it's even more fucked up, then just go to HSL, the hue, saturation, and luminance. Change the hue, change the saturation, and try to fix it that way. Next question is Lightroom versus Photoshop? Question uh, mark. I mean, Photoshop can do everything that Lightroom can and more. Lightroom is really good for beginners. Anyone can use Lightroom and it's very easy to learn. And then Photoshop is kind of more complicated, so just figure out what you want to do. Lightroom learning curve is just like, woo, easy. And Photoshop is like, nyeh, you know? His next question is, what are the most important things to keep in mind for portrait shots regarding composition? Composition. Wow, nice. I am, I think I'm in like a third kind of. You don't have to follow all the composition rules. They're just there kind of as guidelines. Um, but I recommend, if you're starting out, try looking up things like rule of thirds. Uh, my photography teacher gets really antsy about if the photo's cut off at a limb, if like they're cut like right at a joint. He's very against that. Um, so maybe don't cut off their limbs. Another tip, using like things around you, like if there's like something in front of the camera and then something behind, okay. For example, if the subject is in the middle and then there is like a bar in front and then there's like a background far away, composition. It's like depth, composition. It just, it looks, it looks cool. I'll put a couple examples on the screen of what I just tried to explain. Um, but yeah, there's like something blurry in the front, focused in the middle and then blurry in the back. That's a cool way to compose your photos. Rule of thirds, I'll put up some more examples of that. I don't know if I have a lot of photos that have rule of thirds. Um, but more examples. And then I, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about composition. Okay, so yeah, that's all. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and if you guys have any more questions, feel free to DM me or comment or do whatever. I'll be glad to help you out as much as I possibly can. And bye. I don't know how to end these, bye.